we are on. Namaskaram to everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Indian section of the Theosophical Society, I welcome you all for the study session on the topic, Some Difficulties of Inner Life. It's a short uh, writing as well as a talk given by Annie Besant. And Brother Pradeep MS will be the speaker for the day. And I, Mathurnath, the moderator. And joining us on the IT side is Brother Shikhar Agnikotri. Before we commence this session, let us start with the universal prayer. Please close your eyes, take some deep breaths and center yourself. And silently repeat within yourself the universal invocation as follows. O hidden life, vibrant in every atom. O hidden light, shining in every creature. O hidden love, embracing all in oneness. May all who feel themselves as one with thee know they are therefore one with every other. Be still, be aware, silently, repeat within yourself. May all who feel themselves as one with thee know they are therefore one with every other. Let's observe silence for a few moments. Slowly return to your body and let's start the day. Let me introduce you to the speaker of today, Brother Pradeep MS. A short profile of him. He is a master's in biotechnology, working as a business manager for an organic products company and also a professional consultant for hydroponics. He's a third generation theosophist and an active member of the Bangalore City Theosophical Lodge Canada Theosophic Karnataka Theosophical Federation, Indian section of the Theosophical Society. He was born in a family of Theosophical members, hence naturally raised in a Theosophical environment. He is an active member of the TS and was invited by many lodges in Karnataka state to give lectures to their members on various Theosophical topics. He is also an active member of the Young Indian Theosophist Group we all meet every yeah. Sunday online with various activities. Yeah. Video has... yeah. Maybe request someone who's not going to mute to go on mute, please. Thank you. So we all meet uh, uh, on every Sunday online with various activities. And Pradeep has given many lectures and conducted study classes to this group. All the videos have been uploaded to the YouTube in the YIT channel regularly. He has been invited to the panelist and youth forum on the first day of the 146th International Convention of the Theosophical Society held online. And he also delivered a talk there on the subject, what are our challenges? So now we hand it over to Pradeep to take over on some difficulties of inner life. Over to you, Pradeep. Very good morning, everyone. Um, in the beginning, I would like to apologize that I'm uh, out of the city on a highway. Uh, so there may be some noise from the vehicles. Uh, so please excuse me. Um, so today uh, is a study class uh, on the topic, Some Difficulties of Inner Life uh, by Madam Besant. Uh, it was uh, published in as an IDR pamphlet long back. So I think if by seeing the title itself, some difficulties of inner life, uh, we feel uh, they're not some, uh, they are many. So uh, especially uh, in these days, in this uh, fast moving life uh, with uh, such uh, packed up schedules, uh, we all feel very difficult uh, to carry out our uh, inner life. So what is inner life? What do I mean by inner life? Uh, is this spiritual life? Because we participate, we do our job, we do our, our we uh, take care of our responsibilities, uh, everything in our daily life, uh, which is very much necessary. But at the same time, we are also living a spiritual life. 
uh, we grow, we read, we study, we meditate, we serve people. So in this way, we also have a spiritual life. So that spiritual life is what Madam Besant uh, calls as uh, inner life. And she has given some difficulties in uh, this uh, inner life, uh, which are uh, like four difficulties she has mentioned. But in fact, uh, we, if we sit and uh, think, we have many difficulties. Uh, anyways, uh, we can talk about those in the group discussion in the end. But in the beginning, let me uh, give you a brief uh, introduction or uh, a brief mentioning of what Madam Besant uh, has uh, given a few examples, uh, which she think as the most uh, difficult uh, aspects of uh, inner life. Madam Besant says, uh, when we are dealing with our daily life, we somehow we get in touch with uh, spiritual societies, uh, spiritual people, uh, teachers, uh, books and all. And then we uh, start reading them. We start understanding what is spiritual life, how to lead a spiritual life. And then we eventually understand our own uh, existence. We start thinking uh, what is our self. So then we start distinguishing that this body is not actually our self. Our self is uh, something uh, which is deep inside and uh, the consciousness has not been raised to that level and we try to raise our consciousness to those levels. But before that, we also understand uh, that this physical body and there is something called an astral body uh, where all our emotions uh, are existing. And then there is something called a mental plane or mental body uh, where the lower mind and the upper mind is functioning. And then there is a causal body, which is called buddhi. And then there is soul. So once we understand these various layers that are covering our soul, then we feel soul is what we consider as our self. So that's the spirit or the soul is the one which is our self. And all other uh, coverings or these layers of bodies uh, covering the soul are the vehicles of the soul through which uh, uh, by using these vehicles, the soul leads its life uh, in this physical world and in every world as it passes on, it uses its uh, respective vehicles. So this much we have understood by now. In many lectures, I have mentioned in various uh, lectures, whenever Madam Besant give a lecture or uh, uh, give a pamphlet or, uh, uh, or a talk, uh, she do mention these divisions and using these divisions of ourselves, uh, it is what we can understand every theosophical aspect uh, in a much deeper sense. Now, the, the first difficulty in this uh, inner life, in leading this spiritual life, what Madam Besant uh, says is the inertia. So what is inertia? I think science students, physics students, they all know what is inertia. Inertia is uh, a state which doesn't change until an external force is applied. So she uses this uh, word inertia to our bodies, to all our bodies, the physical body, astral, mental, and ca causal bodies. Every body, uh, every uh, vehicle of the soul, uh, it faces this inertia, meaning it remains in a state wherever it is until something pulls it or something pushes it. So there, if there is an external force that is applied to these vehicles, only then they move, they start moving, they start functioning. But if nothing is applied, if there is no any external force uh, that is acting upon these bodies, and then they remain wherever they are. So that inertia, that uh, uh, a state where it doesn't change uh, without any external force is the biggest difficulty in this inner life. So she gives various examples. Uh, I think if we start with our physical body, uh, we all have experienced this. Uh, you know, we early in the morning, we feel uh, we want to take, go for a walk, go for jogging. Uh, early in the morning, we, we aspire to get up uh, early in the morning, but the body doesn't allow. Sometimes the body doesn't move. That 
the body doesn't support your ideas uh, so that until you give uh, some amount of push to yourself to your physical body uh, until you have a strong will and then pull up yourself only then the body moves and then it starts responding so this basic thing we all have experienced so we have planned to get up in the morning at 5 o'clock and then do meditation so we need to wake up at 4 o'clock and without using alarm or any other things the body doesn't behave as you have planned so if you don't set up an alarm and you sleep and then you won't even you don't even wake up there's nothing that can wake you up but after some time as you keep on practicing and then finally one day without using any alarm your body will start waking up at 4 o'clock and then you uh, get uh, fresh up and then do meditation so body needs some kind of external force to uh, to help you uh, to this inner life and in the similar way every other vehicle for example the astral body the astral body also doesn't respond to you because you know uh, you you're not supposed to uh, uh, you aspire or you're not supposed to uh, have a strong bonding to something a physical a mat a physical thing or uh, or uh, being emotionally attached to something you know that you have to control your emotions you know all these things but still the astral body also goes out of the way and then it acts as if it is an individual body uh, it doesn't listen to you uh, it it doesn't care what you have thought in your mind or in your buddhi or in your soul or whatever and the astral body don't even consider the the status of the physical body also so even though your physical body is not supporting for some uh, emotion or for some happiness or for some joy or some pleasure but still the astral body aspires for that and tries to go towards it and tries to attain it even though the physical body also is not supporting so in this way uh every vehicle physical body or the astral body acts in its own way and then it, it it's not in harmonious with any other uh, uh vehicles or with your spirit and then it remains in that state no matter how much you try to pull it away from that state and try to uh, give it a different uh, uh, dimension but it doesn't change so they it needs some amount of uh, practice it needs some amount of um, it needs some amount of uh, a force from yourself from your inner spirit that can make these vehicles to act how you want <clears throat> so in the same way again the uh, mental plane the mental body the lower mind and the upper mind also has its own consciousness also acts individually tries to act it gives so so many thoughts come up automatically you are trying to meditate you don't want to uh, give rise to any thoughts you are trying to push away all the thoughts by force and that, but still you are getting thoughts so you would like to keep your mind clear when you meditate uh, you are trying to meditate and then keep all the thoughts clear or not give rise to any negative thoughts you are trying to focus on some uh, mantra or any um, one particular thought and you are trying to meditate on that repeatedly but still mind behaves in a different way so it acts in its own way it's not coming in harmonious in what you want it to be so even buddhi uh, the causal body also has its own consciousness and it acts in its own way and you are trying to uh, nullify some negative um, ideas that comes in this plane but still uh, many negative things come up <clears throat> and then it makes you to think so when those negative things are allowed then it comes down to your manas and then comes down to your astral plane and then you try, try to aspire for it and then your physical body slowly tries to act accordingly so no matter in this inner life how much uh, you're trying to be in harmony with all these bodies and then to allow your physical body your astral your mental and the causal bodies to to behave with that spirit or the voice that you get in that spirit but regularly continuously they all act individually sometimes and then they remain in that state until a force is applied so that is what madam besant is talking about so she says a uh, lack of enthusiasm uh, is also one of uh, one of the symptom of these uh, uh, inertia of these uh, inner bodies uh, so you you want to 
you want to do something you want to help or you want to go for a tos program or you want to do meditation or uh, so many things so <clears throat> but lack of enthusiasm and when that day arrive when that day comes there are so many problems you feel many problems and then uh, you don't feel like get, waking up you you feel like postponing things so all these things they it happens because of these individual consciousness that in each vehicle that you have developed which is not in harmonious with what you, what the inner voice that is coming from your spirit so for this madam besant says the first thing is we need to identify this i the individual consciousness in each vehicle so you think your physical body is yourself you think your astral body as yourself you think your emotions your happiness your joy your pleasure as yourself something that you you want and you think those thoughts that are coming in your mind as yourself so once you start identifying with these vehicles the consciousness in these vehicles as yourself and then that may that develops this individual consciousness and then that is the reason why they are not in harmony so for that <clears throat> madam bethan says we need to recognize these individual bodies as our instruments so until we recognize them as our instruments then they becomes the player the musician and our we the self becomes the instrument so they start playing on us they start making us to behave according to them but <clears throat> if we can think them as our vehicles these individual bodies or the consciousness in these individual level as our vehicles something that we will use and only then you can make use of them and then make them act accordingly according to your soul according to what uh, uh, what inspire what what inspiration that you get from your soul so she gives an example if uh, if there if a musician is not able to play a proper music and then he starts blaming on the instrument so madam besant says there is no problem with the instrument it's not the instrument that is creating a bad music but the musician who is playing on it he doesn't know how to use the chords properly he has not set tuned the instrument in the beginning he don't know how to move his fingers across various chords so he doesn't know how to handle the instrument and hence the music is bad so if there is some bad music you can't blame on the instrument it is the musician who should take the blame so therefore here the musician is the soul yourself you are the musician and all these bodies the physical astral mental and causal bodies they are the instruments so if they are not playing in harmony if they are not if the mu- if the music is not coming out good what 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 do you mean by music is not good because all these chords various chords like starting from the physical body till the causal body all these various chords they are not playing according to the tune set by the soul so therefore when they are not playing accordingly means the soul is not able to play them properly is not able to use them properly so once you recognize these individual bodies the consciousness the level, uh, in these individual bodies as your instruments and then <clears throat> you stay away from them observe them and then train them to act accordingly only then this state of inertia or this state of being wherever it is uh, without able to move or without able to progress so this kind of inertia this difficulty of inertia can be overcome only by using force force in the sense not externally but from your soul so what is that force it's not forcefully uh, you know you can't force yourself to sit and meditate it's not that uh, you you can't force yourself to uh, not to eat even though you are hungry no it's not that you you can't force yourself not to cry when you you're feeling like crying uh, or not to laugh when uh, when there is so much of joy and happiness outside so that is not the force madam besant is talking about the force what she is saying is slow and steady and um, an uh, as an everyday activity to train these instruments to become to come to harmony so that is the force a slow and steady force not an uh, a sudden or uh, a one time force to exert on the on these bodies so that's not what madam besant is saying it is a slow and steady process by which you train your bodies by which you train your instruments of the soul so 
that they all come in harmony so whatever idea whatever inspiration that you get from your soul the the causal body should uh, give a uh, proper ideas according to that the mental body should give proper thoughts according to that the astral body should give emotions or uh, feelings according to that idea and then the physical body should for, perform the physical work in order to satisfy that inspiration that you get from your soul so unless you recognize them as your instruments unless you stay away from that consciousness and uh, unless you stop thinking these individual consciousness in the bodies as yourself and and fix your consciousness only to the soul and you think yourself means only to your soul that inner voice that inner inspiration that you are getting and all other consciousness all other uh, ideas or activities is going because of these bodies acting by themselves so only then uh, you can make them to play according to your music and the next difficulty uh, madam besant is saying is ebb and flow of feelings i think i myself have um given this uh, i mean conducted the study class of uh, madam besant in our group last time the topic was on moods madam besant on moods so she gave a very detailed lecture to some uh, audience in london of, of about moods how moods changes so the same thing she is mentioning here in this topic also and she has given a uh, very briefly not so detail how she gave a lecture in uh, what we discussed previously if you go back to that video uh, madam besant on moods uh, this entire chapter deals with how your mood changes and what you can do for that and what are the reasons for that how to overcome but anyways she has mentioned very uh, briefly uh, in this uh, topic uh, in this uh, lecture also so here she says the second difficulty in inner life is the ebb and flow of feelings what is ebb and flow so ebb and flow means uh, just like the waves they in the in the in the coastal regions there are rocks and then the waves go up they make the rocks wet and then the waves go down and the rock again dries up due to sunlight so this and when there whenever there is a high tide during uh, the full moon uh, the the tide is raised so that this Uh, these rocks in the coastal region in the in the beaches or in the in the end of the uh, uh, ocean they are under the waters for sometimes and whenever there is a low tide and they are again exposed to sunlight so this ebb and flow of uh, uh, is called uh, this this feeling we also have in our moods in our feelings where sometimes the feelings are very high the enthusiasm is very high we would like to the energy is very high but sometimes the energy is so low uh the the feeling is very low we become moody uh, we don't want to do anything suddenly we lose interest in something so this kind of change in moods the the uh, like something like tides they go up and they they come down so this is again a uh, second difficulty uh, in our inner life so sometimes we are so enthusiastic of practicing meditation practicing service uh, studying uh, spiritual books but sometimes suddenly we lose interest uh, suddenly we feel uh, Uh, we are not uh, gaining anything so uh, this kind of feeling uh, everyone uh, gets these kind of feeling and madam besant says it's quite natural so you don't have to worry about it uh, you you don't have to feel guilty about it sometimes you with lot of enthusiasm you have accepted so much of uh, uh, responsibilities uh, or you have planned for so many activities in your spiritual life but some suddenly you lose interest and you are not doing anything and then you feel guilty and then you don't want to go back because you don't want to show your face because you have done something in the beginning and you stopped for a few years and now you want to start again so you don't want to show your face and you will lose it forever you will stop it forever so madam besant is saying it's natural so don't worry about it this kind of ebb and flow the high tide and low tide of your feeling of your enthusiasm in the spiritual life is very very natural you don't have to feel guilty about it sometimes you are so enthusiastic to do achieve something to read something to learn something in a, in a spiritual life sometimes you don't want to do anything you just want to lie down and be lazy and and uh, you just have to spend uh, you just want to enjoy your physical life that's fine it's it's quite natural she says it is something like a passing cloud so you when you are sitting on top of a hill and then you are watching the sunlight that is falling on the ground and the clouds are passing so sometimes a part a patch of the land is covered with uh, uh, i mean becomes uh, shadow 
because of the clouds and then the clouds pass on and then there is again light and she also compares it with day and night so as there is day and the night falls uh, the night comes and then after night there is definitely a sunrise and there is again a day in the next uh, so she suggests that you need to consider this high and low state of feeling low, state of enthusiasm high and low enthusiasm as law of nature so it is the law of nature so that is very natural uh, because it's happening for some reason and she also says these uh, these periods of low mood these periods of low enthusiasm is also very much necessary to take rest to allow your physical body to astral body to rest to 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 take its own time to come back and this happens when you're overworking them when you're overworking your physical astral and mental bodies when you're using them too much when you're giving too much of work for them it happens very naturally because they just want to take rest for example your physical body you're working too much and it need rest it has to go to sleep and then there is a day again so only when you take rest when you only when you take a proper rest and have a good uh, tight sleep only then the next day you will be in much more enthusiastic with much more energy to work so therefore this high and low feeling is not something that we have to feel guilty about we have to feel bad about it's a law of nature it is very much necessary for these lower bodies to take rest to regain strength to regain enthusiasm for the next day to come so so this uh, the, uh, madam besant says you need to accept this high and low enthusiasm in spiritual life as something like day and night as something like as a law of nature which is very much necessary so that you give yourself time and then come back again with uh, with more energy and more enthusiasm and the next uh, problem that madam besant uh, is saying uh, giving an example is revivification of dead thoughts this is something new uh, even i haven't read about this before uh, something very new for me when i prepared this lecture i uh, read this i have i have never heard anyone talk about this but i felt it's such a beautiful concept what is revivification of dead thoughts madam besant says in your mental body this is purely with your mental body with your mind lower and upper mind you have developed various thoughts but as you grow in your spiritual life you try to avoid those thoughts and then good thoughts which you call as positive thoughts start coming from your mind but those negative thoughts which are not in par with your spiritual life which are not supporting your spiritual life which are not um, which you think is immoral because the mental plane morality is the major uh, virtue in this uh, mental plane so which you think as immoral those thoughts which you have which you had raised or which you have given away before but madam besant says those thoughts they still remain they are dead but they just remain as dead bodies or dead souls just like roaming around of course they don't have life but they just remain there they don't have life your 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 thoughts the new thoughts that are coming from your mind lower mind and upper mind they are not giving life to them because your consciousness is not supporting them you do give rise to positive thoughts and then only these positive thoughts that are coming up from your mind have life but what happens to these th dead thoughts sometimes they get revived they get energy they come back to life and suddenly all of sudden even though you have practice to give to think positively to come up with positive thoughts that help your spiritual life and also your uh, physical life your normal day to day life but sometimes those negative thoughts which you were uh, which you were thinking before they again come up your mind still starts thinking in that direction you may wonder uh, even after 10 or 15 years of practicing meditation practicing these positive thoughts why such a negative thought is coming in my mind again which i was which i was thinking like this long back it is because those that dead, uh, dead dead thoughts they get revived suddenly they absorb energy suddenly they absorb life and then they get revived and then those thoughts start playing in your mind now who gave life to these thoughts who gave energy to these dead thoughts it's not you madam besant says it is because of 
the contacts that you make in this physical in this physical life when you come in contact with a person who is giving rise to those negative thoughts sometimes the dead negative thoughts in you may get energy from the other person may get energy from that person who is always giving those negative thoughts similar negative thoughts so the energy that these dead thoughts even though they are your own thoughts the energy that it has got is not from yourself but from the uh, sahavas that is uh, the 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 contact with whom you came in in our in our sanskrit we say sahavas dosh so when we make such uh, contacts when we make such friendships when we come across such people those negative dead thoughts in us also get energy from them and then they start becoming active so madam besant says it is very much necessary to identify where did these dead thoughts got their energy from so uh, let us simplify this i think i'm sure i'm going very deep and uh, using only madam besant's words but if we can give some uh, uh, examples because we are all very young we have definitely faced this we we were uh, we were having some bad habits some bad uh, uh, ideas before we have given up we became spiritual we are growing up uh, but suddenly all of sudden when we meet our old friends and then we go out again we we get those ideas we get uh, we 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 get attracted to those bad habits uh, uh, like spending time sitting somewhere not properly following the rules uh, we were not uh, as a young we were not following traffic rules we were jumping signals and then we grow up we start thinking that's bad it's not a good citizenship we have to behave properly and then we are driving in a proper way and all of a sudden we again meet some friends and we are going for a picnic and then we do the same thing we jump signals and then we try, we try to uh, go back to that younger life so we have, we all have faced these uh, simple things Uh, that we the negative thoughts that we have gave up the negative ideas which we gave up long back they get revived sometimes uh, it's because of the life that they got from the other person but not from yourself so what you have to do you have to totally avoid them no you don't have to avoid people because they are your friends of course they are your friends even though they are not grown up as you even though they have not given up these negative thoughts as you have given up doesn't mean you should not make friendship anymore you have to cut your friendship uh, and don't have your it doesn't mean that you should not meet such person for that madam besant says it needs some kind of will power from you where your dead thoughts your negative dead, dead thoughts do not take up the energy from the surrounding so for example you are in a very negative place with lot of negative vibrations your negative thoughts do take up energy from them even though it's not from you it's not from your soul so it's not like you have to completely avoid them of course if you can avoid some negative things some negative people some negative uh, places it's well and good but sometimes it's not possible because uh you have to live in this life you can't cut your friendship you can't cut your relation you can't cut uh, you can totally not avoid going to some places but it is necessary to do your uh, to do your work to do your job to do to take up your responsibilities as a family man you have to do those things but madam besant says the easiest way is to wait to sit and wait to meditate and to observe those negative thoughts until it loses its power so madam besant says you don't i don't know what happened am i online yes yes you are online we can oh, hear you i'm always getting this uh, that admit admit someone and then ah, okay i will i will remove you from being co host so you will not get disturbed okay 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 thank you so much so uh so so we were talking about the revivification of the negative thoughts the dead thoughts so how to come up how, what to do uh as i said you can't avoid people you can't uh, look at your friendship and your relationship you can't totally avoid going to some places it is necessary then the the easiest way or the best way is to observe to observe these negative thoughts and then don't allow your other bodies that is your astral body and your physical body to support these thoughts because these negative thoughts they get, they got revived at your mental plane right at your at your mind in the lower mind or in the upper mind so 
you need to hold on your consciousness at the lower bodies the physical and the astral plane to hold on to them to observe them and not allow them to help these uh, negative thoughts because those thoughts in the negative thoughts in the mind they if they have to come into action they definitely need the help of the lower bodies right so again in simple terms when you get a negative thought with regard to uh, uh with uh, when you are in a negative place or with a negative person so and then you feel like doing something then you just observe take your time and not allow your physical body to help that negative thought to hold on to your uh, lower consciousness is what uh, uh, is, this is what we can do the best to allow them to die themselves to allow them those negative thoughts to lose power so as soon as you get a negative thought again again and again you don't have to feel guilty about it you don't have to feel bad you don't have to think oh after 10 or 15 years of studying this theosophy uh, now i am getting this uh, negative thought which i am not supposed to do i have learned so much uh, what what's happening in me am i not a proper student uh, have i not completely uh, uh, read theosophy and then start behaving accordingly no it's okay it's quite quite natural it's very natural that these thoughts dead thoughts they get life maybe not from you from the other from the external force or the from the external environment surrounding you for that you need to sit and observe until they die by themselves and not allow your lower bodies to help them and then finally uh, the fourth uh, difficulty in the inner life madam besant is saying is hurry unrest and the illusion of time so what is hurry people uh, some people think uh, i have only a few years left i am already 70 years old uh, i may live for another 10 or 15 years and now i want to learn everything i want to read everything before i die i want to become uh, change myself and then i want to become a highly improved spiritual person and some people even uh, they lure them they with these uh, very fancy words like moksha uh, initiation and all these things and then suddenly they say that oh if you raise your kundali uh, if you awaken your kundali then you become suddenly a spiritual person you get initiation and you go and at 70 years of age they teach them some uh, very uh, strong techniques of uh, uh, this kundalini shakti and all those things so it's hurry madam besant says that's completely bad you should not be in a hurry you should never be in a hurry if you think you uh, if you think you have very less time you want to learn everything fast that will definitely not help you that will definitely will harm your body that will definitely will harm your soul that will not help you and the other opposite thing is sometimes you think oh i'm already 70 years old 80 years old uh, now i got to know about some a book spiritual book or some spiritual meditation or something uh, what i can achieve in the remaining time in another 10 years i may live Uh, what i may achieve in uh, in this 10 years time of meditation and let me give up i don't want to uh, do this in this life maybe in next life if i get a chance i will do at a younger age uh, i wish i got got to know about all these things when i was very young so that i could have practiced for 50 years of meditation and 50 years of service and 50 years of spiritual life by now i would have improved a lot so this is again one more aspect of um, unrest where you think uh, you have no time so madam besant says both are wrong either to, uh, to thinking you have less time and then acquiring all the knowledge and being very fast in the spiritual life is also wrong and at the same time giving up and not doing anything just because you are too old is also wrong she says you need to consider that soul has no time soul has no connection with time soul is eternal it is it is not bound by the time it's only in this life these bodies are bound to the time these bodies they come here they grow and then we shed the bodies but soul is something a continuous process soul is eternal it it is not bound to the time it's not bound to your age soul is not bound to your uh, um, the consciousness in this lower bodies so therefore soul has no age it is eternal it is untouched by time and that's the reason why every a uh, gods are always depicted as and young if you see the photo of uh, the pictures of any god if you uh, uh, in your prayer room and all why why always we we make the pictures of god as very young because to say that the soul uh, it it the meaning is the soul 
has no uh, connection or uh, is not bound by the time it's always young it's always at the same uh, age if you consider it so therefore for example if at very uh, very end of your uh, age at 70 or 75 if you come across to some spiritual aspect it's okay you can think as at least you are uh, building a kind of foundation uh, for your next life and you have to do how much ever is possible not be in a hurry or not totally give up and then be in this illusion of time and you need to think that it's the soul which is timeless which which is eternal it has nothing to do with the time and then how much ever possible how much ever you learn in this in this life that will be carried definitely and then the process of uh, the growth is very continuous and it has nothing to do with your age in this uh, life so uh, with these four difficulties madam besant uh, says uh, to to consider the not only these difficulties there may be various difficulties that uh, come up in your spiritual life in your inner life uh, various doubts that may arise so madam besant in the end gives a very simple thing how you deal with these difficulties in your inner life the first thing is to just observe observe whom observe a person who is whom you think as a spiritual being observe his life observe how he is behaving and then just observe you may consider him as your teacher you may physically be in contact with him you may do whatever you want but that's not necessary or that's not compulsion without being in physical contact with a person without having to meet that person ever you can still consider him as your guru you can still consider him as your teacher by only observing his life by by seeing what he speak listening to what he speak by uh, reading what he has written so for example so many of us have not met madam besant or uh, j krishnamurthy or h p blavatsky we haven't met but we consider them as our teachers because we have read what they spoke we have read what they have written we have read about their life so therefore you observe someone whom you think has uh, grown to some extent in this spiritual life that's the first thing the second thing is study then you study the study some literature study that gives you knowledge about spirituality and you try to read as much as possible as and then analyze what you have read and then try to uh, as much as possible bring that into uh, reality and then the third thing is to meditate so here observe study and meditate the third thing is to meditate meditate on what you have learned what you have observed and meditate on what thoughts that is coming from you and how it can change and then whatever difficulties what madam besant has mentioned in the beginning all these things finally can be solved or can be get ridden by by meditation so even in inertia uh, that external force that madam besant is talking also comes through meditation that external force that you pull up your bodies also comes through meditation that's how you uh, gain energy to pull your bodies even in the changing moods ebb and flow of feelings even that needs meditation to observe your low enthusiasm state to observe your high enthusiasm status and then even in revivification revivification of dead thoughts uh, he were also you there is a lot of observation that you need to make on these negative thoughts and from where they get uh, energy so finally in not to be in a hurry and not to be in the illusion of time also meditation helps you so finally it is the meditation the uh, uh, the thoughts that arise from yourself observing these thoughts is what you can overcome all these uh, difficulties there may be many other difficulties which uh, we all can list we all can discuss not we don't have to necessarily rely upon what madam besant has given examples using these examples now it it inspires us to think about other difficulties and it also gives us uh, solutions of how to overcome them and uh, i open the session for such a, a, a discussion now uh thank you so much pradeep that was really really insightful and it was also very personalized because you know all of us do face difficulties in the spiritual path so uh in response to that i remember i just want to read out the last lines from the speech uh from that uh, article which blavatsky uh, which madam besant had said 
many other difficulty will stretch itself across the upward path as the aspirant essays to treat it but a resolute will and a devoted heart lighted by knowledge a resolute will and a devoted heart lighted by knowledge will conquer all in the end and will reach the supreme goal to rest on the law is one of the secrets of peace to trust it utterly at all times not least when the gloom descends no no so that aspires can ever fail to rise no heart that loves can ever be abandoned difficulties exist only that in overcoming them we may grow strong and they only who have suffered are able to save so with that note i also open the floor for questions and discussions and it's a small request from pradeep sai since he's traveling that we end the meeting on time so we have a next 40 minutes any uh, any insights sir may i make an observation uh, to yes. sri yes, pradeep ji he has explained all the aspects of inner life or inner state of mind by using the psychological term consciousness and other aspects and even the theosophical terms like astral body uh, it is my observation not in form of a question but i want to know there is a method known as introspection in psychology we can say observation is external whereas introspection is internal method through which we can know we can explore in freudian terminology psychoanalytic terminology pre conscious subconscious which is the way to understand or to explore the unconscious mind so how we can develop or improve our skills to introspect because some of the people cannot introspect exactly they may have some approximation but introspection is a sometimes it is related to meditation also in form of our states of consciousness known as samadhi or in indian context turiya known as trance so how we can improve it is by a sublime question for pradeep ji thank you sir thank you so much uh, dr hemant uh, sharma yes, uh, for uh, coming up with this uh, very uh, correct word introspection uh, observing thoughts we generally use this word observing our thoughts but it's n- it's nothing but uh, introspection sometimes when we talk about the when we use this word observe means opening eyes and observing something outside that's what people think but how to observe our thoughts it's nothing but the other word is introspection and meditation and introspection they go hand in hand so uh, the question was uh, how to develop this skill right how to develop this skill of uh, introspection because uh, okay if you ask a person who uh, who is who, whose work is to kill animals say for example so just cut an animal uh, if you ask him to sit and introspect uh, how bad it is to kill an animal how bad it is to take a life even though no matter how much how many hours he sit and meditate he still feel i didn't find anything wrong right e- even though you allow him to introspect keep on asking him to do meditation and if next day morning he come and said i meditated a lot and i felt it is my job and i am killing these animals and i didn't feel it's wrong so introspection or meditation or observing your thoughts should happen after you gain a knowledge mm. so this it's a path introspection is a path for that path there it needs light so light there should be some light on the path and only then you can walk on this path a uh, uh, walk walk or go uh, in this path of introspection so what is that light so that light on the path is the knowledge that you should gain first by and how do you gain knowledge like i said by from a person from a teach from a person whom you regard as a teacher by reading book by going out and seeing the world and and then observing your own uh, observing those difficulties and then ab- and then introspecting your own feelings by all these three methods you gain knowledge so using that knowledge then you have to introspect on your actions so if without knowledge without uh, giving a proper knowledge to a person that uh, killing animal uh, is bad and because they also have a soul 
and they you are you are you are uh, killing them uh, you are not allowing them to properly live this li- lead this life and then develop into a higher soul and if we give all this knowledge to him if we say that uh, it's the same soul that takes various uh, avatars like either in um, matter physical matter or in a lower animal kingdom birds plants and then finally to humans it is a same soul that travels and it is an evolution it is an evolution of consciousness all this comes as knowledge only when you give this knowledge to a person then when he introspect under the light of this knowledge then he feels what the action what he performed is wrong right exactly. so it is the knowledge uh, which has to be gained first and un- under the light of this knowledge uh, then only the introspection will help and that's how we develop uh, introspecting or observing our thoughts yeah thank you sir for your experience sir. yes fellow yeah uh, just wanted to add uh, some ideas of mine so uh, so basically like firstly uh, when it comes to problems that we have they are mostly because of human beings so if we keep this uh, theosophic idea in our mind that uh, it's all karmic and we are linked to the people who we are uh, the families we are born to and our siblings and that we have something to learn from them so uh, in that journey the journey that we are traveling with them we have something to learn very important change has to happen inside us that is one aspect of uh, which is theosophic uh, thing the second aspect is that we have to make radical change in ourselves now that is why we are doing theosophy theosophy is not a laid back work it is it has to have because what will take maybe 10 births we are trying to achieve in a shorter time how by identifying what is wrong in our thinking so when we are conscious of what is wrong and we make a deliberate effort to change our thinking that gives us that step up okay it's possible that again and again like the revivification will happen our old thoughts will come back but this time you know that you had a different thought about the same topic which you had which you were thinking so you will know that there were many things that in many other ways to look at the same thing which before you had one way now you have three other options to think about the same thing so this way you change your mind so i don't know how many of you feel change inside you it's important to feel that change if it's not that others should say you should be able to identify that you have change until that time you still have to keep working so uh, all of these lectures are meant for their radical change main thing is that that okay anyone any more questions or any points discussions i just wanted to say i mean very nicely presented and explained in his usual manner as pradeep does uh, making everything clear so no doubts or questions but yeah just regarding that revivification of thoughts i think maybe that was the reason behind uh when in practical occultism hpb says to reduce or minimize the contact with other people and not only with other people with even pets or uh, i mean because they when we come into touch contact with them they also affect uh, with their uh, tendencies and instincts and why at some stage people on this path become uh, in hindi the word is swa paki means they cook their own food they and they have their own utensils and everything like in even any best doctor any patient used to do that she used to carry her own utensils to for food and okay many people used to criticize her or make fun of her but that's what her master told her so i think that individualization of like in our aura only it's our original thoughts are there and all these dead thoughts should not revivify and to to the extent when they cannot be revivified i mean there comes a point when it's like a grain of uh, gram if it is burnt then it cannot have any more you know creation life in that so just wanted to say that thank you so much thank you
Professor Shinde has unmuted. Yeah. Thank you, Mathurnath, Pradeep. Very nicely studied people are there and they are contributing, propagating theosophy. We are really happy to listen to you. Mathurnath has not yet spoken yet, but we want to uh, yeah. listen is, to you he, also. He is going to speak on 11th December. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Still, it is very interesting uh, book you have taken for this. Because when uh, Annie Bajant wrote this book, that time in the world, we were really in need of peace. Many world wars were going on. So we were really in need of peace. And uh, we need laws imposing peace. And uh, we also needed police force to regulate our conduct. And we also needed those who are inwardly turned for inner life, some instruction to maintain their morality. And But if a man is inwardly peaceful and affectionate, then our outer laws are not necessary. That is what any patient wants to focus. It is not that the inner life difficulty, she said, like a physical inertia, emotional passion, that is what Pradeep very nicely explained. Mental thoughts and mental, uh, uh, what we can say, we don't use our intellect properly. But any patients also said, inner life forces that helps us. She said, have a living faith in perfected beings. There are perfected beings. We are going towards the perfection. So there are perfected beings. Have a living faith in them. And such make faith makes all things possible. You take it for granted, that is what she said. And then don't lose hope. As Master said to try, don't lose hope. And uh, then hope itself will make you to work and makes all things to work. And finally, she said, love what you are doing. And if you love what you are doing, that love itself makes that doing beautiful. So these inner life forces also we must use. And outer life forces, whatever difficulties, she said, they are not necessary now. We don't need uh, police force or uh, instruction for conduct or uh, all this. So that is what I want to add in this. Otherwise, you all are very good studied people and you have uh, good uh, skill of explaining it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And, uh, it's really great of you. You keep us giving resources and books after books so that we also understand things much better. So thank you for that, uh, Shinde sir. Two more minutes, maybe Taranji yes. can. Yeah. First all of all, hi everyone. Got some of joined Wong after a long time. Like in Pradeep Ji, Ko jitna suna aur Mathurnath Ji ne bola, Chandrakant Shinde Ji ne bola. To mujhe isme atma vishleshan wali jo baat Pradeep Bhai ne boli, usme unho ne bola ki hum dekh kar jo kahte hum observe nahi karte hum atma vishleshan karte hum. तो मैंने इसको एक छोटा सा नया नाम देने की कोशिश की है मैं गलत हूं या सही आप बताइए मैंने इसको बोला है स्व बंधुत्व मतलब कि सेल्फ ब्रदरहुड <laughs> जब तक हम अपने इनर सेल से एक सेल्फ ब्रदरहुड नहीं जगाएंगे तब तक मुझे नहीं लगता है कि हम उस इनर सेल्फ के साथ एक दोस्ती कर पाएंगे या उस तक पहुंच पाएंगे तो सबसे पहले विश्व यूनिवर्सल बंधुत्व के पहले हमें अपने अंदर एक स्वबंधुत्व जागृत करना है जिसको मैंने टर्मिनोलॉजी दी है सेल्फ ब्रदरहुड I don't Taral know. Ji, Taral Ji, Ji. there is one book by J. Krishnamurti. Okay. Dialogue with oneself. Oneself. Yeah. Okay. Dialogue with oneself. You read it, it gives more explanation That's about right, it. Yeah. So nice of you. Thank you. This thought was coming to me and I have used it in that play. I have seen it in that play. Maybe Pradeep Ji will remember. So I think that the brotherhood, the universal brotherhood, there are many brotherhood in the brotherhood. जो हमें अपने विचारों से या अपने सेल्फ से करना है या बहुत अलग अलग तरह के ये बंधुत्व है जिसको हम इनर सेल्फ की स्टडी बोल ऐसा मेरा सोचना है पर ये बुक आपने बताई शिंदे जी मैं जरूर पढ़ूंगा 
thank you thank you taral ji nice to see you okay. so mathur uh, maybe you can close the meeting yes. it's already time i think yeah yeah so we are on time and thank you all yeah. thank you pradeep for a wonderful uh, discussion thanks today. thanks everyone thanks shikhar ji so we'll just uh, have a closing thank prayer you. please close your eyes center yourself सर्वे सर्वे सन्तु सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कच्चिदुखवाग्भवे शांति 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 लोका समस्था सुखिनो भवन्तु थैंक यू ऑल